Good morning. Today is July 28, 2020. My name is Lilia, and in today's options lesson, I'm going to be selling to open a ratio put spread, but I'm going to make a little adjustment. I'm going to add a long put at the bottom to act as a hedge to the downside. Before I start today's lesson, I'd like to thank my Patreon members for making this video possible. And now I present to you our lesson for today. I am using the Think or Swim trading platform, which is part of TD Ameritrade. In front of us is the one year daily chart for IWM, which is the Russell 2000 ETF. We can see here that IWM today is in the overbought region and it appears to be reversing and possibly going back down. If you look really carefully at the implied volatility, you can see that it is rising just a little today because today IWM is down about 59 cents. So when the underlying drops, the IV rises and therefore the put premiums are also going to rise. I have a lot of videos on the ratio put spread, so I'm not gonna repeat everything about the trade. So this is gonna be a somewhat quick lesson. In a ratio put spread, you've got a debit vertical put spread plus a naked put option. That is a traditional ratio put spread. For a lot of traders, having the naked put sitting out there with no protection, it's a little nerve wracking. So today I'm going to show you how to add a little wing on the downside to give you a little hedge just in case. In a ratio put spread, ideally you want the underlying to rise. But at the same time, you're also kind of hoping that if the underlying goes down, you're trying to figure out where it may go to. You don't want it going down too far because then you might lose money. But you kind of want to predict where it may go to. So looking at this chart, I'm going to say that maybe it could go down to 134, which is the regression line right here. So that's my starting point. So I'm going to build my ratio spread by going backwards. And by the way, this is not a real trade. This is just a lesson on how to place a ratio spread and how to manage it. So by looking at the charts, I kind of said that I think IWM could go down to 134. So that's my starting point. And according to the statistics, the 134 put option has about a 20% chance of being in the money. And that meets my criteria. So that means this is going to be my starting point. This is going to be my short put. And then I'm going to buy to open a long put with a higher straight price. The goal is to set up this trade so I have a net credit. So now I'm going to change this from single to back ratio. And I'm just going to randomly click right there. This is where I'm going to make the adjustments. 134 is going to be my short strike. I'm selling two of those. I'm going to buy to open a long put with a higher strike. And this gives me a pretty nice credit of $1.51 mid price. So again, if you look really closely, you're going to see one long put and two short puts. Embedded in here is a debit vertical spread that will be worth 50 cents at expiration if 
IWM goes down to 134. So I mentioned earlier that this naked put right here makes a lot of people very nervous. So I'm going to show you how to add a long wing to that. Let's go back up here and change this back to single. And now I'm going to go further out of the money and buy to open a really cheap long put. So there's my trade. I'm still going to get a credit of a dollar and something between 135, 141, I think. And because this is not a real trade, I'm going to aim for the market price of a dollar 35 cents because I want this to fill. Okay, so it looks like my trade filled at a dollar 52 cents. And this negative number is probably going to be confusing, but it is a credit trade. So I did receive a credit of $1.52. So to confirm, we can look under trade price and do the math ourselves. We have two short puts that gave us two credits of $1.74 each, minus one debit of $1.83, and minus another debit of $0.13. Cents. So if you add everything up, it does give us a net credit of a dollar and fifty two cents and the reason it has this negative number is because of the way that I set it up. A traditional ratio put spread has one long put and two short puts with the lower straight price. In this case, I added one more long put at the bottom, so I kind of confused the system. And for some of you who are familiar with butterflies, this sort of looks like a butterfly. But we're not going to talk about butterflies today. We are actually talking about ratio put spreads with the hedge on the downside. So now let's analyze this trade. As mentioned earlier, embedded in the ratio put spread is a debit put vertical, which is a semi bearish trade. This ratio put spread is technically 50 cents wide. So if IWM stays above 134.5 at expiration, my total profit on the trade is simply the original credit. And the reason for that is because if IWM closes above my long strike of 134.5, all of these puts are going to be out of the money at expiration and they will be worth nothing. So I am left over with the original credit, which is $152. On the other hand, if IWM lands right at 134, then I'll get to make an extra 50 cents on the embedded debit vertical spread. 50 cents is equivalent to $50 for one contract, and that's what I have here. So if IWM lands right at 134 at expiration, my total profit will be the extra $50 on the vertical put spread plus the original credit of 152. So 50 cents plus the original 152, $2.02. .02. I've got one contract times one times 100. My maximum profit will be $202 at expiration if IWM lands right at 134. The long put at the bottom with the 105 strike price is simply a hedge for that naked put that was sitting there. This prevents a total disaster in the event that IWM plunges. But this trade is still going to lose money if IWM closes below 134. The 105 put option does not mean that I'm going to make money. Again, it is simply there 
to limit the losses on the downside in the event that IWM plunges. So right here is a vertical put spread with a 134.105 strike price. So 134 minus 105 is 29 dollars. So on the bottom I have a vertical put spread that is 29 dollars wide. So what does that mean? It means that if IWM plunges all the way down to 105 105 dollars at expiration this vertical spread is going to be losing $29 times one contract times 100. It will lose $2,900. But then I'm going to add back in the original credit of 152 and I'm also going to add in the extra $50 on the debit put spread. So the trade is still going to lose money. 26 and 98. But with a trade like this, the losses as well as the profits are limited. So no matter how low IWM goes at expiration, my losses are going to be limited to this number. My trade is going to lose this much money only if IWM closes below $105 at expiration. So that means this put option is going to be in the money. And what is the probability that the 105 put option is going to be in the money at expiration? Around 2%. So basically there's a very low probability that this trade is going to suffer max loss. This trade is going to have the maximum profit. If IWM lands right at 134, that's where I'm going to have the max profit, which is again the original credit of 152 plus the additional 50 from the embedded debit vertical spread. That's going to be my max profit. Max profit will be achieved only if I hold this trade all the way until expiration and if IWM lands at the perfect spot of 134. Like all options trades, I never hold them until expiration. My goal is to always close my trades before expiration because I don't want to take any chances at the end. So again, this was not a real trade. This is just a trade to show you how to place a ratio spread and how to manage it moving forward. Ratio spreads are one of my favorite strategies. And there are so many different ways to manage them. So stay tuned for part two of this series. Thank you for watching. And many thanks to my Patreon members for making this video possible.